Hey students, I'm Chris and I teach the only online ESL course in politics, history, economics, and like today, philosophy. If you're interested in taking a course with me, maybe because you're studying these things at university, or maybe just because you're interested in learning about these topics, write to me at the email in the description and start learning about the world while improving your English. Today we're talking about the social contract. The social contract is a theory in philosophy about our obligations toward the rest of society. Thomas Hobbes is one of the greatest proponents of the theory. Hobbes lived during the English Civil War of the 1640s. He thought the best way to end the violence around him would be if all citizens gave their loyalty to the state, in this case to the king, in exchange for the relative peace and order the state imposes. In other words, you obey the government and it will maybe try to stop people from killing you. Well, he wrote a lot on the subject. It's a bit more complicated, of course, and that's why we discuss a bit of what he wrote in one of my political philosophy classes. Uh, but for now, I can add, he also said, each person should be essentially equal. Um, that everyone's desires and wishes were of equal worth, and therefore um, should have an equal amount of control over the state. One question students might have is how exactly this apparently contradictory, uh, these, these contradictory ideas uh, could find balance in society. Uh, how can we give the state all the power and yet give citizens equal rights? People are still debating that question. Uh, if you ask me, I don't really trust someone with power over me because having power over someone means you can do whatever you want to that person. I don't want people passing laws over me. I don't want whole police forces being told to use violence against me. And I don't mind compromising, cooperating with the people around me as long as they respect my freedom. But that's not how government works. Another man who had an opinion on this was Jean-Jacques Rousseau. In case you don't know French, I'll say that word again. Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Rousseau wrote a book about a hundred years after Hobbes uh, called The Social Contract. We read a bit of that book in my courses too. The first line from the book is very well known. Man is born free, and everywhere he's in chains. Man here is an old-fashioned way to refer to all humans that you might see in old books like this one. Um, Rousseau is saying, in nature, we're free, and yet everywhere people live, there's someone taking away their freedom. Like Hobbes, Rousseau said we're basically equal, but that we should give up some of our freedom to a state. Rousseau's writing was influential in France around the time of the French Revolution, and France was one of the first places a government was designed on the basis of the social contract. It was believed the state would be a true democracy and represent the general will. However, Rousseau probably would have said that democracy should be direct democracy, not representative democracy. Dem direct de democracy, sorry. Direct democracy means citizens like us can propose new laws and vote on them. Representative democracy means we vote for people who we hope will maybe vote for laws the way we want them to vote. Rousseau thought a real democracy could only exist on a small scale, like in Geneva in Switzerland, where he lived, 
because people could come together and agree on things more easily in smaller groups. Most of this part of Rousseau makes sense to me. My only problem is, I don't think we need any kind of law-making or law-upholding institution that forces everyone to do what's written down. To my way of thinking, most of the rules we follow without thinking about it are already norms and customs things people have already agreed on without even knowing about it most of the time. Society is a living thing. Like all living things, it's always changing. Norms and customs are always changing. Beliefs and ways of thinking are always changing, even if we don't realize it. And if you saw my last video on governance, and you should, you know there are all kinds of ways of organizing society. Society could be governed by norms. It mostly already is. But when you have a government, you have to accept one way of organizing and governing society. I don't really like the term social contract because I don't see how the supposedly representative democracy that we have now is in any way a contract. Surely a contract is an agreement, something you choose to enter into. If you haven't asked me, I haven't agreed. What if I disagree? Is it still right to force me? Maybe on some things and not others? Who gets to decide? People are still debating these questions, too. Probably the key writing that led me to these conclusions is the, the book No Treason by Lysander Spooner. In it, Spooner shows how a constitution, which is the written document that creates or constitutes a state, is only an agreement among the people who signed it. If you and I haven't signed it, we haven't agreed to it, so it doesn't apply to us. We could make an agreement among, in Spooner's example, say, all the adults of a town to build and take care of a hospital. But we couldn't write that the people from the next town have to be the ones to build it. Or that our children and grandchildren also have the same obligations because we wrote it down. I think if we're going to have something we call a social contract, it should be something everyone agrees on. If we don't agree, we need to start questioning the whole system. After all, if the system doesn't work for us, who does it work for? Let's review the vocabulary. We talked about obligations. If you know the word duties, it's basically the same thing. Things we have to do, whatever that is. We learned the word proponent. A proponent is just anyone who proposes something. There's no word proposer, the word is proponent. The word contradictory, uh, which is when two things can't go together. You can't have something that's both dry and wet, for example, a person who's both tall and short, they're contradictory. <clears throat> we learned about what's called the general will. I don't know if I really necessarily agree that there is something we could call the general will, um, just what people generally want, right? Um, but uh, you see it a lot in, in the kind of thing that we that we read in these courses. We learned about the difference between direct democracy and representative democracy. Direct democracy being when you can be the one to vote for uh, or against new laws and so on. And representative democracy is when we vote for someone to do that for us, maybe. To my way of thinking, just a kind of uh, fancy way of saying, in my opinion, 
We talked about norms and customs. This is really important, I think, uh, because norms is what people consider normal. If it's a norm, then we think of it as normal. And a custom is just any aspect of a culture. So they're, they're similar things. And finally, the word constitution, which is a written document that creates or constitutes a state. Um, every country, every, every nation state has a constitution. So uh, that's all for today. I hope you learned something useful today. If you did, please hit like. And of course, if you're new here, please hit subscribe so you can see more videos just like this every Sunday. See you next week.